Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, in today's demo, I'm going to show you how easy it is to define uh, data as a service use case scenario using Denodo Professional. Uh, this is quite common and a popular use case where users are trying to expose uh, their business reports integrated data uh, that can then be leveraged as an API to integrate with other third-party data sources, right? Uh, my name is Mitesh Shah, and I'm the director for our cloud product management offerings. Uh, so let's get started. My goal is to showcase this in five simple steps, 20 minutes or less, right? So step number one, uh, before that, the assumption here is that you have an instance of Denodo Professional uh, up and running through the cloud marketplace, okay? Uh, first, we can talk about the, the use case scenario. Uh, this is where the business analysts, the business users are really, you know, looking at how they can solve the challenge of exposing that data as a service quickly. The second is connecting to the Amazon, the AWS data sources. In this case, uh, RDS Aurora, Athena, uh, and other data sources. Once we have the connections, we're gonna define the business model. Uh, thereafter, we're gonna create the actual API uh, data service using the Nodo, <clears throat> and then leverage that API to a web browser or other tools, right? So in a nutshell, the end-to-end, -end, you know, the power of the Nodo is going to be showcased in terms of how easy it is to you know get started on your uh, data as a service you know use case journey i have my uh, instance of uh, turner professional up and running uh, but first let's talk about step number one what's the business scenario here my data is in different applications different files right in this case i have my current sales data in rds aurora and the historical sales data in AWS Athena, right? What I'm gonna do is combine that sales data to build a dashboard that can then be leveraged to you know, do further analytics, expose that, uh, that data to the different lines, uh, you know, LOBs, the line of businesses, that they can then further you know, integrate that uh, uh, using that API that we have exposed, right? So, that's the nutshell, you know, uh, what we're gonna showcase today and let's get started. I have my instance up and running, as I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> we're gonna log in here. And let's see. Okay, perfect. So I'm logged in here uh, to my design studio. That's the interface that you're gonna use. Uh, and uh, we will, do all our tasks from here for uh, you know the first step i'm going to do is define a new database in the nodo uh, which is going to be used for all okay okay let's see Okay, so once the database is created, you can see it here, uh, we're gonna get started with creating the connection string. That's a step number two, right? Uh, we connected to find the connect string here. So we are gonna create those to MySQL, uh, RDS Aurora, right? Uh, or I'm just gonna pick my SQL here, just for simplicity's sake. <clears throat> I have my connection information stored in a file here, so let's do that. Login password. And here I have my driver class and the path set up here. Let's test the connection. Okay, great. We're gonna save it. And here you can see my connection is defined here for my RDS Aurora, right? So second data source is gonna be your uh, AWS Athena, right? So I'm gonna call it 
the Satina. Uh, use the driver here. I have my connection information. Uh, okay. We're going to use the AWS IAM credentials to connect. And here I have my access ID and the secret password, which I'm going to pull from here. Okay. The driver class path, Athena, and the Simba driver that comes along with it. Let's test the connection. <clears throat> Perfect. So we're going to save it. So here you have your two data sources, MySQL holding the current sales data, Athena having the, the historical sales data. So the next step is step number three, right? We completed, we looked at the business scenario. We looked at you know, how we can connect to my data sources. Now I'm going to build the business model, which will be the integrated report, right? That we want to expose as a service. So first I'm going to create the base views. So let's click here. You know, bring back the data that I have, uh, import all the metadata in the nodal, right? So these tables that exist under my MySQL, I'm going to import them, uh, import their metadata uh, as base views. So that's where I create selected. And here you can see those my three base views are there. Same thing we'll do with, okay, before we go to Athena, uh, well, we can do it now. Okay, let's go and do that. Create the base views. I have my TPCDS data model here that has all the tables in it. So we're going to select. Well, for this exercise, I just need the store sales data. So instead of picking all of this, I'm just going to pick the store date and the store sales, okay. So these are the three main tables. I'm gonna do create selected. And those three tables, the base views should be created in here. Now, one thing you can do quickly is you can rename this base views, okay, to prefix them with BV or something like that. So that it's very clear that these are base views. What I can also do is create a new folder and say I would say base views and what we can do is for better you know uh, sim management store sales, sales, sales and then I can take all the tables that I've defined into the base views okay so you're just trying to organize this in a way that's easier to manage okay now let's close this other windows so next step is I'm going to create a quick, you know, integrated view of my store sales. So you remember this was from my MySQL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new join operation with the date table. So the store sales based on the, the time of the transactions, we're going to combine those data. I'm going to connect the join key here with the data sk which is my join key that's where you can see the connection and then here i'm gonna pick the year which is greater than or equal to 2002 so this is my current sales data right when i go to output i'm gonna look at make sure i update my primary keys this is the item sk and the Ticket number, right? So this one here is my primary key, and the other one is the item SK. Okay, so these two are my primary keys, and then what I want to do is in the final integrated view, I'll say I'll call this current sales. Okay, so IV for the integrated view current sales, and then I'm going to remove all the date columns that I really don't need as part of the output, right? So I'm going to quickly just make sure I can remove this in the from the final view. Uh, I'm just going to keep the data SK column, 
which we have used as part of the join operation. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so here you can see I'm um, going to remove except this date SK, which is uh, part of the date dem. Remove this. Okay, and then we're going to save this integrated view that's coming from the two tables in MySQL, you know, RDS or what we can do is execute this and see if we can get some fetch data. And there you go. So this is my data from the current sales. Okay. And on similar lines, what we're going to do is my historical data that's coming from Athena, we're going to do the same, you know, with the store sales from TPCDS. I can build a join, use the dim, and and drag and drop. Make sure you connect your join keys. That. And here in the where condition, what I'm going to do is when we were defining the The current sales, this one is anything before 2002, right? So in the earlier scenario, we fetched everything that was greater than or equal to 2002 year, and here everything that's historical less than 2002, right? And then again, we go back here, we make sure we pick our primary keys, that's the item SK and the ticket number, and then the rest of the columns that we don't need uh, we're going to get rid of them, right? So let's do that quickly. I'm going a little faster here because you have probably seen that with the current sales. So this is the historical sales data, right? Uh, let's do that. Okay. Uh, just want to remove all of those except the data SK column, right? And then we're going to re rename this IV historical sales. Okay, save it. And then let's do an execute on it to just make sure we can fetch the historical data from the AWS Athena. Okay, let's give it a few more seconds here as we get through that. And on the left here, you can see, you know, I have my two, you know, integrated views from Amazon, uh, Aurora, RDS, and the Athena. Now, what we're going to do further is combine this view into, so what we'll define is a new union extended. And I'm going to take my current sales and the historical sales, and I'm going to output that to my total sales view okay so this is my final output i'm going to save it and if you run you get all your historical plus the current sales data so that's the strength of you know how easy it is to combine and integrate at different data sources and there you see uh, you know my historical uh, data that's coming from the total sales data. So we're going to quickly do a quick refresh just to make sure we can see all the views here. Okay, and there it is. So now this is your aggregated view, right? And the key per the objective here is how we can expose this to uh, as an API as a data service. So this is the last and the final step where you take this view that we have created and we're going to say i want to create a new data service as a rest web service okay so this is where you are creating a web service and you want to save it as far as the setting goes you know you can leave them more or less default you can you know play with some of the authentication etc but uh, uh, i would just leave it as default for now so here you can see I've created the web service. Now we need to deploy this. That way we can leverage this web service by other third-party applications. So here what it's doing is going to publish this web service, right? And 
So now that my web service is deployed, what you can do is you can also see it here under web services container. If I pick my database total sales, this is the web service, right? On the left-hand side, you can see the web service has been defined, total sales view, uh, you know, and then I could say launch the web service URL, or I can click it here from open the web service. And there you go. So now we, I can always, you know, use this URL uh, to publish or, or share with another third party integration where if you click on here, you see your, all your data, right? So this is how you can expose uh, your integrated data as a web service quickly and that web service uh, or a data service can be, you know, uh, that API can be leveraged by a third party, you know, tool or, or can be used by, you know, we can build a data marketplace of those different, uh, you know, data services that can then be exposed, uh, you know, uh, to different variety of users. All right. So let's go back to our presentation here. So we went through all those different steps here. Okay. So in order to get started quickly, you know, you would, can do this on the cloud marketplace using the 30-day free trial of uh, Donato Professional. Uh, you, you would need your own cloud account and you can start with as low as $6.27 per hour after the 30-day period, ha period has expired, okay? Uh, Donato support is included as part of a subscription and also during the free trial, you get access to our sales engineer with whom we can work to further explore and, and understand, you know, uh, tester use case scenarios, right? Uh, we also offer a 30 minute free consultation as part of that, uh, you know, free trial per uh, exercise. All right, so thank you very much for watching this. Uh, uh, hope you learned this in end to end, uh, how quickly it is to build uh, this uh, deploy a data as a service using Tenado Professional. All right, thank you and all the best.